Infinity has been slowly dropping and hyping up the newest QX80, which is supposed to be revealed on the 20th of March. And for good reason, because their whole lineup is outdated and it's pretty much irrelevant apart from the QX60. So in this video, we'll just be going over what we know about this vehicle. So let's start with the exterior. We have a general idea of how this vehicle will look due to the monograph concept, along with videos of it disguised and camo from Infinity's own hype campaign. And like every other Infinity QX60 slash QX80, we know it's gonna be big and boxy. We did get some leaks of what this vehicle will be looking like in the flesh. And this comes from a car expert article that I'll link in the description. So here we have a massive front end with uh, daytime running headlights uh, that we've seen before in the teasers. The main headlights are gonna be divorce units lower in the bumper. Um, there isn't much more to say other than it looks like an evolution of the existing QX80, QX56 lineup, and I think it looks fine enough. The leak only covers what the front of the vehicle will look like. The rest of the vehicle, we can kind of get an idea of that from what it looks like from the teasers, and we can expect an air duct on the hood of the vehicle, and we can expect these LED um, rear light bar on the rear of the vehicle too. Performance-wise, Infinity is dropping the 5.6 liter V8 and going with a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged engine rated for 450 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. This is an increase of 50 horsepower and 103 pound-feet of torque versus the outgoing V8. I put a quick comparison on a spreadsheet and we see that Infinity is ranking towards the top of its class in terms of horsepower and torque. Um, and the vehicles that are above it in terms of power are probably going to start at a way higher price than that of the QX80. The new engine is going to be made to a 9-speed automatic transmission. Infinity says that it has a 40% wider gear ratio uh, range allowing for uh, both responsive acceleration and efficiency on highway cruising. In short, it pretty much has the same setup as the Nissan Z, but with some modifications of course. Infinity says that this will deliver better fuel economy despite making more power. It will also have active grill shutters that will work at highway speeds to deliver better aerodynamics and thus better fuel economy. For those who want a smooth ride, Infinity will offer electronic air suspension and dynamic digital suspension technologies. The digital suspension works by evaluating the vehicle's motions to reduce the body motion and it will also enhance the driver's confidence and make sure your passengers are comfortable. They also mentioned that the air suspension automatically lowered when the vehicle is in park to make it easier to load or unload luggage and passengers if you have older passengers. A potential interior image was leaked as well. We have a brand new steering wheel. It's reminiscent to me of the design that Genesis used for the GV80. If you like screens, you like this vehicle because they're using a typical dual screen setup. However, these seems like they're a bit larger than the typical 12 inch on the digital display and the infotainment system. Um, there'll also be an additional screen down below the infotainment, which what appears to be climate, sea heating, and other comforts as well. Ambient lighting seems to be present throughout the vehicle. There isn't much more to take away here until the full reveal, in my opinion. Infinity did confirm that they went with Klipsch for their premium speaker system. It's a part of the Panasonic Automotive um, Systems, and it's the same group behind ELS and Acura, which is regarded as one of the best sound systems in the automotive industry. So I expect high marks here for Infinity. It's going to have up to 24 speakers at 1200 watts, meaning that they might have lesser versions uh, for a lower grade, like 12 to 16 speakers, for example. Infinity says that it's capable of 3D sound similar to the ELS systems, and they also show that there's also going to be a speaker in the front headrest, and that'll be finished in aluminum like some of the other speakers as well. The speakers in the headrest can give navigation directions or phone calls can be played only for the driver. Infinity says that it ensures privacy, that it's quotes like having a private press conference room on wheels. Um, while I'm sure it disrupts the music less if you're ex if you're receiving turn by turn navigation systems for your path for your passengers, I'm sure that people could probably still hear it. 
Or if you're on the call, can other people in the vehicle really not hear what the other person is saying back? Also, will there be an option to disable it? For example, if you wanted to have a group conversation on your phone or something like that. And it'll just be interesting to see how this works in the real world. However, this isn't too su surprising because Nissan already does a similar gimmick on their Bose sound system. Uh, even in something as small as a Nissan Kicks, I don't think it has the same, you know, call direction functionality as the Infinity, but they do put those speakers in the headrest. You'll also be able to hear the speakers better thanks to a quieter cabin that Infinity says is due to a 57% increase in lateral stiffness and a 25% increase in torsional rigidity. There's also a new feature called biometric cooling, and this is going to use an integrated camera um, that's integrated into the vehicle's headliner. When it detects a passenger is warm, it'll adjust the temperature accordingly and the airflow to send the cool air to the second row without those in the front seat needing to do anything. Infinity says that the system can have the time for second row passengers to reach a comfortable temperature. Uh, it's kind of excessive needing a whole infrared camera just to cool your vehicle. I'm not even sure if I want a camera to look at me at all times, but that said, that's what you're paying 80 grand in a luxury vehicle for. Speaking of excessive, there'll also be seat massaging capabilities, but not just on the first row, but on the second row as well. There'll also be ventilated seats for both rows as well. In one of the teasers, they shows the, con the controls for the seat massaging and ventilation being where the middle passengers could sit. So it sounds like there'll be a captain's chairs only option, similar to big luxury sedans like the 7 Series, the LS, and even the Lexus um, LX600. Heated seats will be made, made available in all three rows, which is a pretty nice feature. I'd expect pricing to start above the current model, which starts at $74,000 and goes all the way up to $88,000. Here, I'm expecting something like $77,000, and it could go all the way to the low 90s on the high end, but that's just a quick observation. So this looks pretty prom promising from Affinity. It seems like they've done a lot of good work here, but we'll find out all the details on the March 20th reveal date. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tell me what you think down below the comments, right below the like button and peace.